Well, Dylan, what date is it? August 14th. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it sure is. 8-14. Well, we're shooting this video on August 14th because I just confirmed that with Dylan. I just forget what date it is. I know it's Monday. Pretty pretty sure. <laughs> Feels like it's a Monday. Monday. Yeah. I didn't put a video out today, so it had to be a Monday, a Wednesday, or a Friday because that's it. But anyways, the point is that date, we're starting to get late for some food plots depending on what you want to plant. So I want to give you a little bit of guide depending on where you're at in the country of what you can still plant, some late season food plots, some last minute food plots that you can still get in the ground and, and have some reasonable expectations of success. And I first wanted to point out, I'll say, you know, it's a little late, meaning late August to mid-September when you're probably seeing this or planning for, you're starting to get a little late. And that means that there's certain varieties that I wouldn't want to see you plant, like our Big Boost Brassica. When I say mid-September, you know, late August to mid-September, I'm referring to there's about a three or four week difference from where we're at in, uh, let's just say central Wisconsin, central Minnesota, central Michigan, all the way down to Louisiana, um, Arkansas, where when you get down to the south, you can plant uh, quite a bit later uh, because of temperatures, expect a rainfall. You get a lot more rainfall later in the south where you might have drought up until that time and then all of a sudden you get a lot. So you really have to consider uh, where you're at. And so that's why I give this little range, but that's why that range is there. If you're up where we're at, um, I'm in Southeast Minnesota, Southwest Wisconsin, that's where I plant. And this applies to Southern Wisconsin, over into the South half of Michigan, most of Michigan, uh, Lower Michigan, over into Northern half of Pennsylvania, New York, um, over into Minnesota, possibly even over into South Dakota, Southern North Dakota. I kinda, if you see that line right there, that's this late August time, and then you can add to it from there. Uh, but I wanted to talk about, so when you get into late August around here, if you put brassica in, a brassica blend I love. We have our Big Boost Brassica. It's one of our best sellers. We sell a lot to more southerly areas as we get later into the, into the month of August and early September, and that's appropriate. But when we have someone that's planting in northern Wisconsin, and they're gonna plant around Labor Day, uh, they're really asking for a very, very poor crop. And I mean, if you, one of the things about Braska, you can expect in that first month of growth with decent conditions, anywhere from six to eight inches. Now we don't add canola, kale to our blend. That Those can grow four feet tall in 10 weeks, 12 weeks, but deer don't like it. So we don't put it in the blend. And so that can be a little deceiving. I'm talking about normal good Braska where we have typical rapes, radish, and uh, turnip blends, varieties, forage, and bulb, depending on uh, which variety of brassica that is. A bottom line is, if you plant northern Wisconsin, northern Michigan, brassica, and you're getting into almost Labor Day, I'll go to someone's property in the spring, and there'll be little three, four inch stunted growth plants that are just sitting there, and you can kind of look at it and say, you know what, you planted around Labor Day, didn't you? And the reason you say that is because you get that first frost in mid-October, you plant that time, you're only planting for about six weeks of growth. And what ends up happening is if you get an early frost, say late September, it just stops the growth immediately. So you get three weeks on that. Well, when you get three to four weeks, that first three to four weeks, when it's growing in August around here, which would be early September down south, you can expect four inches of growth, eight inches of growth, depending on when you get your rain and when you planted it. Now the second and third month of growth, you can expect 12 to 15 inches. So when you plant a month late, you still get the few inches of growth on the front side, but you're losing 12 to 15 inches of growth on the back side. I hope that makes sense. So when you plant around Labor Day up north, you get frost the end of September, you're gonna end up with a three or four inch stunted plant and you're not gonna get any kind of volume at all. So when it comes to planting late, throw out the brassicas, of course, clover, unless you're establishing clover, which is a good idea. You can establish clover for the following year, but you're not gonna get any growth this year. Of course, beans, uh, corn is out of the question. You'd be planted months earlier. Um, even late planted beans, sometimes we have that in our fall blend mix. Um, I don't like it because it doesn't germinate well for fast, but around August 1st, that might be decent around here. End of August, not appropriate at all. So. What I'm looking at is, just as a general rule, this time where you're a little late, is a little grain and a lot of green. You still can take advantage of some green, but you have to throw the right green. And I'm talking about leafy green, meaning peas, radish, buckwheat. You can still take advantage of that. They're all quick growing. They need some rain to germinate. 
but you can get some good growth and they're all highly attractive. And so that's the idea behind a late blend like this. You get some attraction. And then what I'm doing with almost all of these is I'm going back in three or four weeks later and I'm throwing another 150 pounds or 200 pounds of rye right over the top of it. Wheat in your area if you need to. But bottom line is now you can put a great attractive plot with some leafy green. And so I look at a combination like this. We have our tundra oats, tundra peas, or cold hardy oats and peas. I look at this time right here and get into late August. I might go a little grain, meaning it's a little bit later. I wouldn't plant 50 pounds per acre of, of oats in early August, but I would at this time of year. 100 pounds of peas to 150 pounds of peas per acre. Let me ask you this. I've seen companies out there that sell 12 pounds in a bag of peas. I want to talk to you guys about that. 300 pounds per acre is a typical standalone pea planting. 12 pounds per acre gives you about one plant every 25 feet, 20 feet, 20, you know, a long ways apart. You can't even tell that it's in the mix. When I, If I told you, well, this 12 pounds is good for a quarter acre, I'm woefully off. So we're, we're talking at this time, you'd put 50 pounds of oats per acre. We like the cold hardy oat varieties. And then 100 to 150 pounds of peas per acre. That gives you a lot of green. You could even top dress that with about five pounds of tillage radish per acre. You could even add 20 pounds of buckwheat per acre. The buckwheat's not gonna be around that long. They like it when it's early. Tillage radish, they love earlier. The tillage radish mixes very well with the oats, the peas. It doesn't get suppressed as opposed to rye. Rye can really crowd it out. So you can have a real nice blend late where you're putting, again, it's late, so you'd go a little bit more on the oats, 50 pounds per acre. That's about a half acre's worth, but it's not gonna grow that, that much. Peas, you would go more like 100, 150 pounds per acre. And then you're adding as a complement to that about five pounds of tillage radish, maybe 20 pounds of uh, buckwheat. You get a really nice leafy green mix with a little bit of oats. And then after the deer smash it into early October, end of September, I'm gonna add about 200 pounds of winter rye right over the top of it and enjoy green all the way into the spring. So again, a little bit of green, in the form of oats and and then a lot of rye later but and then that leafy green at that time now we get into late plots and i'm talking when you're planting a plot labor day that's starting to get late um, so you still have some opportunity but you want more of a balanced blend of greens and grain this one i start to throw in a little bit of rye so i might do a mix because again you're not going to use much height and volume i might go 50 pounds of a cold hardy oat 50 pounds of rye, might go 100, 150 pounds of peas, you still need a lot. I'll get rid of the buckwheat because it's too close to frost state, but I'll still throw some radish because radish is the fastest growing brassica and it'll still mix well with that. I might use five pounds of tillage radish again. So what I'm doing is I'm introducing a little bit more rye in that mix because again, you're looking for grains are gonna be the workhorse. The oats are gonna die out in December, November, January, depending on where you live with frost and you're giving more of that balanced mix of green and green at that time. And that's October, Labor Day to October 1st. Again, October 1st down south, more Labor Day in this area where we're at, that wheelhouse area that I talk about across the upper north, upper Midwest and all the way over to the Northeast. And then you're getting into the are you serious zone, you know, where you, you wanna plant a food plot. I've found that you can have good luck. And that is late September to late October, depending on where you live. UP of Michigan. This is all the way back into the early 2000s. Had a new food plot cleared, had it all finished um, the last weekend of September. I really wanted to have a planting at that time. So what I did is I put out two to 300 pounds of winter rye per acre. It was a lot. I fertilized and limed at that time, then got snow on October 1st. We actually had geese landing on the field eating some of the seed. The snow melted and by October 10th, I had this beautiful haze of green starting on the field from the melted snow and 70 degree temperatures that followed. That's pushing it, folks. But at the same time, you can get something done and it has to rely heavily on grains at that point. In that case, I'm looking at heavy rye, 150, 200 pounds if you want to diversify. You can add another 100 pounds of peas per acre, a lot of seed, but at the same time, you're not expecting a lot of height. So you're trying to fill space 
horizontally, not vertically. And then radish, if you want to try some leafy green, that's about it. Peas are slower growing. Radish jump starts and germinates a lot faster than peas. So at that time, I might still use five pounds of tilled radish per acre, but I'd go into that with the expectations that, hey, unless we have a warm up, the radish isn't going to contribute much. And then still, I'd look at this as late September to late October. I'd look at mid-October, third week of October, when you get a little warm up to middle to late part of November, down south, I'm adding another 150 pounds of rye right over the top of it, 200 pounds of rye, and enjoying the season. That way I'm gonna have a nice lush green base. I'm slanting it more towards greens the later I get, more towards leafy green and goodness and more attraction the earlier you get. I'll tell you what, when you have young rye and oats planted and they're growing young at that late time, really late for planting, deer love it. They really love it. You just don't get that lot of volume. You don't get that lasting diversity and attraction. So that's why I want to slant this and, uh, and really you know, talk about realistic expectations for what you're planting and uh, what you can expect as you get into uh, the heart of deer season for, for what you planted. So... Hope that makes a lot of sense. You know, you're always trying to plant before rain. That really helps you. Look at it this way. The peas take the longest to germinate. Oats are right behind that. Tilled radish is before that. Buckwheat germinates the fastest. Tilled radish is right up there too. Brassicas, clover, those germinate really fast. Although clover grows very slow, brassicas grow fast. The brassicas get out competed by the rye very fast. Light oats is okay. Tillage radish is the fastest growing brassica, so that's why sometimes I might plant that with that grain mix. And I'd temper my expectations for that. You really need some warm weather and some good luck. But bottom line is there's still a lot of combinations that you can plant late, a lot later than a lot of people might think. But what I find is that, you know, people might take a chance on these late food plots. I think a lot of times they have unrealistic expectations for what they're planting. And, and that's what I see is you can have late plots. You just have to pick the appropriate seed blends and combinations to make sure you have a great chance of success. And when you get into the spring, a lot of these you're adding a lot of rye to. I don't like letting that rye get over 15, 20 inches. I had a good friend, Jack, right now. He was telling me that he's got a lot of, he had great germination, great rains over the last couple weeks with his August 1st plantings. Brassica and, and other early season crops, the uh, fall power greens, that kind of thing. But then he's got a lot of rye coming in because he had standing rye, he knocked it all down, and now you're getting a bunch of rye coming in and it's germinating in about a month to five weeks through early at hundreds of pounds per acre. That'll screen out everything else, it'll shade out and everything else, it'll kill the growth of the peas and the brassica, greatly diminish all of it, and you're left with almost pure stunted rye that's too thick and not attractive to deer. So in that case, you're letting that rye seed develop, let it go for about three weeks, just about getting to that poise, point where it's gonna suppress the, and, and kill the growth of the brassica and all the leafy goodness, the buckwheat, peas, and that's when you're spraying it. You're spraying it with uh, clethodim. It's a grass-specific herbicide. You can spray that right over the top of your brassica. It won't kill the brassica. It'll kill out any oats you planted, but it'll get rid of that rye, which can be a noxious weed almost at this point. People say, well, you can just have this renewable plot. You have it in rye during the summer. You knock it all over in the fall. Yeah, that's great if you knock it all over in mid-September and you only want rye. But boy, there's a lot of other good things you can plant like we've talked about right here. I use rye every single year. It's a blessing. It's an incredible tool, but it can't be the tool to help you build a deer herd. Unless you're in the extreme north, you have small plots, it's great for layering in that In that case. Used to do a lot of that, we'd layer in an extreme north setting. I'm talking about UP of Michigan, northern Wisconsin, Minnesota, upstate New York, little small hunting plots, great for layering more, 100 pounds mid-August, 100 pounds Labor Day, 100 pounds towards the end of September. You can build a lot of volume horizontally like that with a layering system with just pure rye. But not something I recommend in most areas because there's better choices. There's a lot of better choices for you right here. I hope that makes sense. And I hope this directs you down the right path for a last minute save on a food plot or even late minute planting on a food plot you just developed. There's still time. Just make sure you plant appropriately and enjoy the season. Now, I appreciate you guys watching the YouTube channel, but I don't know if everyone knows everything that we have to offer, whether it's on whitetailhabitatsolutions.com our website, our WHS Wildlife Blends, our seed company, 
Also, Instagram you can check out. I'm very active on Instagram, putting strategies on there, photos of what we do every day. Uh, much more active there than Facebook. But our seed, web classes, books, clients, articles. I have over 600 articles on whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, everything whitetail strategy. Of course, we have hats on there. And then make sure to check us out on Instagram again. But lots of stuff to offer. We're always coming out with new things. And this isn't the end of it. We have more things coming soon. Make sure to check us out.